Hello guys, today let's talk about controllers in Laravel and in this video I want to show you an example of a code which is, let's put it this way, not so good in my opinion. But maybe you convince me otherwise, maybe you can call me old-fashioned that I want controllers to be shorter. So I've been doing a code review for one of Laravel Daily Premium members and this is the example of a controller. I don't even know much about the project but I see flow byte controller for demo as I understand. So form demo data, some other demo data and as you can see the index method calls a lot of this methods inside of the same controller. And I will show you three controllers as examples. So the first one is kind of okay. So for example, if we click get event types, there's hard-coded array of data and then similar get priorities, get whatever, and all of them are arrays, all of them are private methods, which kind of makes sense in a way that you have one public method and then those methods, private methods, are only for that controller and you don't really need them elsewhere. So maybe it is okay to do that in one controller, but as a result, the length of that controller is, what, almost 400 lines. And that is all hard-coded data. I would probably put that in the config somewhere. Or maybe even in a seeder. I'm not even sure, but controller to me doesn't feel like the best place to do it. Because originally, according to the original MVC, again, you can call me old-fashioned, but controller should just get the data from the request, process the data via, for example, service or action or model, and then pass the data to the view. So controller doesn't really control the data, doesn't really contain such arrays of information. It should be passed either via request or from config or transformed in some kind of service, in my opinion. But this is one example. Then another controller. For example, we have results controller. And by the way, I'm kind of criticizing that code, but not with wrong intentions. I have the permission from that person, from the author, to show that code on YouTube. And I'm just expressing my opinion, which is not necessarily correct and not necessarily the only opinion. It may all depend and it's all personal preference. I just wouldn't do it this way. This is what I'm saying. So let's look at index method of another controller. So here we have response, we have some eloquent operations, and then this, this transform result. As a side note, the naming of the method transform result is so vague, so I would be more precise somehow what is the result that it's transforming and how, but let's dig deeper. That transform result is a private method in the same controller and some operations here, and then inside of that method, we also meet this set of methods. So one global kind of private method transform result, whatever that means, and then transform match stats. This one, transform player stats, get default team info. These are all private methods of that same controller. So for example, this is hard coded default team info, but if we go transform match stats, this is more complicated, also partially hard coded. So it's a huge controller in the end. This is what I'm saying. It's hard to navigate and understand what is what. Of course, you can like click back and forth in your IDE. But this is another example of my preference for controllers to be shorter. And in this case, for example, if we just scroll through the methods of that controller, there's private method, another private method of transforming those stats, another private method, private method. And then what surprised me, suddenly I see a public method. So I was expecting again for the same pattern of like index and then a lot of private methods, but then suddenly I have generate report, regenerate report, and generate tactical analysis. I don't know much about project business logic, so maybe those methods do belong in the same controller structurally or by logic, but then this is a good pattern. So generate report has a service to process the data. Same here, we have match report service, tactical analysis service, and this is shorter controller method with a much better structure in my opinion. So no private methods in the same controller, instead it's offloaded to service. And then the third controller I want to show you, which is dashboard controller, and similar thing, index method, get dashboard data, and then this is a private method with some hard-coded things, and then at the end we have the list of methods called like this. I will not even show them, but you get the idea. More methods inside of this same controller without offloading that elsewhere. And as a result, this controller 
even more hard-coded data and the length of that controller is 1355 lines. It's long even to pronounce that number in the video here. So yeah, my point here, if you have longer controller, in my opinion, it's better to offload the data processing or data management to somewhere else outside of controller. And if you want more examples of my opinion on how to structure Laravel projects, reminder that I have a premium course on Laravel Daily, how to structure projects updated to Laravel 12 in 2025. This is a text-based course in this case, so you can read it in one hour, or probably you would just skim through lessons based on specific parts that you're interested in. So for example, service or action, events and listeners, and then areas of architecture like admin and user areas and stuff like that. So I will link that course in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.